Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to a brand new Let's Play. Today we're going to be playing the Stanley Parable. Um, I don't know much about this besides the fact that Boss has kept asking me to play this game a lot. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play the game. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it. Begin the game. End is never the end is never the end. Okay, so I'm noticing a lot of loops. The beginning screen was a like the PC screen in the PC screen. Okay, well, let's see, let's see. Click the skip. No. This is the story of a man named Stan Stanley. Stan Stan Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building. He was employee number four two seven. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Okay. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. Mm -hmm. Stanley was happy. He was or he wasn't? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Hmm. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Uh -oh. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk That's and stepped me out of his office. Okay, stop. Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. <laughs> what if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. <laughs> What's going on with this game? <laughs> okay. Hello? Mm -hmm. Okay, closed. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Where is the meeting No room? matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't <laughs> find a trace of his co-workers. Yeah, they're all gone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
That's right. Hello? Turn off your PC. Awaiting inputs. Hmm, okay. What is the meeting room? Sometimes it's a little bit laggy. <sighs> Nay. My cam wasn't recording. Okay, well, you didn't miss much. Um, hi everyone! <laughs> I'll just keep playing the game, it doesn't matter. Where is the meeting room? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No. That's what happens if I go to the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. <laughs> Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's what I, <laughs> what I wanted to do. <laughs> ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yeah. All right. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible <laughs> it wasn't five years ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh god. That's funny. What is this? Do not jump from the cargo, live while it's in motion, will cause death. I mean... Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. You're Please, scaring me. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. For her? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Is it a trap? I don't trust this man, like one bit. We have no choice. This doesn't look like a good place to... Is this like a horror game? Show this portal. That's her, Stanley. <laughs> you need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Okay. Well, let's do it then. Let's see. Is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life Aww. to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. What, I'm dead? Good morning, employee. Press six for your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes 
is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Press three. What if happens, what happens if I press two? Nothing. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So uh, what are we, are we uh, spent time with the boys? The bros? Uh, what, uh, like, what, what ha what? So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Aww. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with Coming monitors my office and mind again. controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. To tell your kids a story. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Um... And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. Okay, so we just don't do it? <laughs> But we're gonna have to, to... <laughs> what happens if I, just, if I just wait? I don't think I have a choice in this matter. Oh. You see? Can yeah. he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? <laughs> Press X to question the thing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. Who's and I dying? tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. I don't think this is part of the game, is it? Oh, it is. Okay. Hello? I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. 
Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Seeing if I could pick it up or something, you know? Okay, there was something with like a yellow, a yellow line. There is a, like, a yellow line here. There's a lot of yellow here, but okay. When Stanley uh, came to a set door. of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Are we gonna do it? Okay, let's just see. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve... Okay, wait. Let me just... Tomorrow, complete today's... This looks so... Like... How, who moved my desk? Uh, get Chris out of the broom closet. Fire the paper guy. <laughs> Uh, the future was yesterday, tomorrow is now. That's deep. Number of slides on this slide. Oh, wait, let's see. Rate at which chart. Boss appreciation minute. This, I think, the boss is talking to us. Why did we hire you? Remember, it takes two people to certify, and right now you're both of them. <laughs> Plant life, spring break, clear skin, talk radio. Stanley just stood there doing nothing at all. He seems to think I have nothing better to do with my time than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. This is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. Let it ball inside you, take it out passive aggressively, resent coworkers. Okay, this is um Oh god, it's funny. Okay. Let him out, let him out. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, let's do this. What? Is this his office? Shish. This is some creepy Bly Manor shit house on the hill thing. Oh, get Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Two, but eight, of course, four, Stanley five. couldn't possibly have known this. 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing <laughs> random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. There's a camera Amazing. there. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. What the hell? Are we gonna... Okay. <laughs> 
Well, I guess we're doing this now. <laughs> All right. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Hello? Hello? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Ah. Escape. Escape. Let's Although go. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Let's just try it anyway. I mean, the worst, the worst th thing that could happen is that we die a violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Let's see if we can trust this, this voice or not, because if we don't die a violent death... At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Yes. Yeah, okay. So the, he was right, the voice. I will die if I do that. <laughs> or, or will I? As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected oh! that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. <laughs> I Perhaps feel attacked. Death was a great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. Stop! So he resigned and willingly accepted this Stop! to his brief and shallow life. No! No! Stanley. No! 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 <laughs> Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator. Oh. As Stanley was led helplessly Who's into this? the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Yes. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Oh, interesting. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you hmm. see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Nature paintings. Oh, look! It is I, office layout. The blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout the development through the core layout remains almost identical to the first. Oh, really? Okay. The pacing of this. Opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good in a good time. <laughs> okay. The set of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parables Parables design. 
Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Filing cabinets. <clears throat> a selection of the sound used throughout the game when buttons are pressed, each time is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized. Okay. The office. The credits. Kevin Brading. Where do I go? Is this the end? Wait, did I accidentally like went went way too hard on it and just like finished the game? My game froze. <laughs> Well, um, I'll just leave it to this for now. I'm just gonna check to see if I accidentally finished the game uh, too fast or something. Um, I will play this again. <laughs> I just need to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to leave a like and subscribe, and then I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>